tremendous piece of material in front of us, another Mugo pine that's going to pull on uh, quite a bit of our skills to make sure it becomes the best tree it possibly can. Um, so to get started, I've kind of been looking at this tree from a variety of different uh, positions and angles, right? and uh, based on sort of the uh, difficult nature of rotating it, I'm only going to give you guys one look around. Okay, I hope you guys have potentially seen this before we start. Anyways, I think we have two really respective sides that the tree can be formed from. I think that we can start to look here. We catch a, a very nice view of the base. I'll cut the container so that we can see that. Okay, but we've got this fantastic movement. We've got a few special pieces of dead wood, special features in the design that we can highlight. The question is, how do we utilize this foliage mass to bring out the best characteristics that this trunk offers us? Okay, that's the challenge today. How do we use the foliage? How do we get the foliage to a position that allows us to maximize the potential of this wonderful trunk? Okay, so this is one side. If I ro rotate this around, okay, this is the other side that gives us that really nice base, and we see that movement again. Now, from this side, we've got a few more characteristics playing into our consideration. Very large piece of dead wood here, how do we handle this? Right? And then the branching where it's located, how do we use that branching to be able to create that canopy and that silhouette? I'm going to say, and I'm going to use my authoritative decision making uh, capabilities being on stage, we're going to go from this other side. I think we got a little bit better movement, I think we've got a little bit better base. We don't have something so prominent in your face in front of that movement, and I think we have a little more potential over here to utilize the foliage mass as well. Okay? So we'll start out with deadwood work with some branch elimination. If you guys have any questions, as always, let them flow. Um, plenty happy to answer those while we work. Okay? All right, here we go.
Their nature is not this highly smooth, refined, sandblasted, sort of uh, really satiny deadwood feel. It's a little bit more rough, rugged, broken, textured, similar to the bark. It's the nature of a pine, right? And the focus is also not on the deadwood. Uh, juniper, deadwood, and the interaction of alive and dead, visual focus of a juniper. On a pine, it's the, it's the bark, it's the age, it's a little bit more of a quiet movement in nature, really what we're trying to accentuate with pines. So we've exposed a lot of grain, we've exposed a lot of texture, we've tried to enhance movement of the deadwood as we break it down, cut, split, tear, and open it up. Uh, but moving forward to further refine this deadwood, we may remove the bark on the remaining portions that we haven't touched so that we have some contrast of smooth and rough. We have some contrast of ex some exposed, rain, uh, exposed grains versus some areas that just naturally weathered. And when you look at these pieces, right, you see the exact same thing on its natural deadwood where you've got the grain and then you've got a section where the bark just simply over, say, 30, 40, 50 years weathered and fell off. So you get this smooth contrasting with this highly grainy textured feel. We want to try and blend as much as we can of this new deadwood that we're creating in with the old and the original deadwood. Okay? Alright? So, now we've got to start to think about the shape. Now there's multiple ways that we can form this tree. Um, but I would ask you guys first, what is the most valuable characteristic of this particular tree? What makes this tree a good piece of material? The base, okay, the base, the thickness of the base, the power of the base, and the first pieces of movement. Okay, so we're saying, right, this base, this powerful base is quite a nice characteristic of the tree, and this first real dramatic piece of movement, quite nice. Now, powerful base, that tremendous piece of first movement, all right? So our goal when we're doing this, we're always going to be thinking, get this closer, get this closer. Now, say for example, this is a very slender trunk. Would we then want to bring this closer to the trunk? Right, we have a very thick, powerful tree, tremendous movement. What if this was a very feminine tree? What if this was very uh, delicate? No? You wouldn't then. Why not? Okay, good, good, good. So can we safely say if we want to make a tree more powerful, we compact the foliage mass. If we want to make a tree more delicate, we elongate the foliage mass. I think we've had this discussion here before, yeah? You guys look like you need coffee. Uh, everybody's in a food coma. <laughs> okay, all right. So we're gonna start to do some of the first structural movements. Now this piece here that carries the most foliage mass, we need to get this as close to this portion as possible so that when we distribute that foliage mass around this area, we frame in this very thick, powerful base, this fantastic first piece of movement, okay? We use the foliage mass to frame some of these interesting pieces of deadwood where we've enhanced the movement, we've exposed the grains, but our, our sole focus is really to bring priority to this section here, okay? Now, just because we can bend doesn't mean that bending it in any way is, is an appropriate way to go about Simon's tree. So, as we work through this and you guys are standing there, I want you to make sure to tell us, right, if it doesn't look attractive, say, oh, okay, that's great, you bent it, but it looks, looks horrible, okay? If that's the case, tell us, all right? Okay. some of these branches and so when you hit that piece of deadwood 
right? We said, oh, the great thing about Mugo Pines is they stretch and stretch and stretch and they don't break. And of course, as I'm bending it, the first thing it does is break. But then when you take a closer look at it, you realize, oh, okay, there was a piece of deadwood underneath that. The living tissue is still very much intact, so I'm not really worried about that. And I'm pretty sure that every time I say they flex and bend really nicely, they end up breaking. So I'm going to stop saying that from here on out. Okay? So what we want to do, right, in order to make sure that we maximize the potential of this is we're going to keep the apex quite low here. Now, we don't want to jeopardize the quality of the, the design by showing any unattractive movement up here in the structural portion. Okay? So wherever we put that apex, the apex is going to work with, along with, and also disguise or break up the line of anything up here that's attractive. So whether our apex ends here or here or here, that's all going to depend on where those lines that form that structural portion of our tree exist. Okay? Now, from where you guys are sitting and you're seeing this big mass of foliage, do you think we need all of this? No? Too much? Is it? Okay, all right. I wanted to make sure it wasn't just me. It'll make my job wiring easier and uh, maybe it'll make a higher product in the end too, okay? So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna do some branch selection. For the time being, our structure is pretty close to being where it needs to be. We'll do a little bit more work to get this primary branch set and in a position that we can utilize it to really give the direction and flow for the tree. And then we'll bring this more heavy portion into here to start to disguise some of this area to complement this further, compact the design, and then we'll move forward from there.
somewhere around this size when it's totally dense and totally refined, which means a portion of this area here where we have a little bit of untidiness in terms of the structural setting to compact it, right, this will blend into this crown and really kind of over time take on this shape and form. Um, I've provided the two wires here for a reference, and here's why I've chosen the, the position of these two wires. I wanted to see this bend here so that we had movement through here, up and through here, and we caught that last little piece of negative space. So when you look at it and line the wires up, you can see daylight through there. That gives you one more accentuation of movement, all right? So in the future, we'd like to obviously gain back budding, obviously improve density. Some of these branches that are excessively long, we would like to shorten, mainly in the back here. We have a lot of length back here in the back without any interior buds, interior ramification. That is definitely something that can improve. But I think, and I feel pretty confident that we were successful in closing down the design of this tree to really accentuate the strength of the base and this in interesting movement through here. Does anybody have any questions for me? Yeah, last chance. Okay, all right. Uh, well, I, I, what's up? Yeah. Can I just ask, and I was yeah. before someone else does. All right, we've got to this particular stage now. How would you see oh, yeah, the process right. with the tree aftercare over right, the next right, six right. months to a year? Yeah, yeah, aftercare, very important after this kind of styling and manipulation. Uh, the last thing we would want to do is repot this tree this year, okay? We would never handle the roots after doing something very major like this. One insult, one major injury at a time, okay? So we'll take this tree, we would want to avoid putting it out in prolonged, really severe cold. We wouldn't put it out where it's going to freeze, all right? Some of us are saying, oh my gosh, that means a greenhouse or something. Yeah, when you do this kind of work on a tree, you need to really baby it. You really need to, to cater to the tree's needs after this, which means no freezing, maybe giving it a, a, a mist if you have a hot or windy day, particularly wind, and ideally we would keep it out of really heavy wind so that the foliage doesn't lose a lot of moisture. Of course, we worked as, as hard as we could to preserve the movement of resources through these trees, no breaks, no, no major cracks or splits, but the, the styling process definitely interferes with movement of moisture and resources through the tissue no matter how careful you are. And if you're gonna really create something interesting and something dramatic, a lot of times we push that tissue pretty far, okay? So we'll wanna give it a little bit of supplemental mist, maybe once or twice a day out of significant wind. And we do want this tree to have a lot of sunlight. And the more sun that you guys can get it here in Europe, the better, because sun is how this tree photosynthesizes and generates food and energy and feeds itself as well as patches the damage that we've done to it through the styling process. Okay, so this is the very best time of year to do this kind of work on a pine, as long as we can keep it from freezing. Okay? This is when pines are most durable, most capable of tolerating this kind of work. All right, so I have no doubt that this tree will thrive after this. Any questions? Yeah? Okay, thank you guys for your time. Thanks for sticking around and your patience, and uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. Uh, and I get to come join you and watch these guys work, so that's exciting. Okay, thank you.